Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. It is Friday, November 1st. We got through October uh, and we have a lot to talk about in the tropics. At least we could have a lot to talk about. Uh, we'll dive into that in just a moment. This update's being provided for the All Hazards Consortium, sensitive information sharing environment where we share information across platforms from private sector owners and operators uh, to the private sector liaisons that work within state emergency operations centers. Well, look at this. Wow, this is a GOES satellite view that uh, I zoomed in on this ocean storm, which is a very large scale storm. But in the last several hours, it's really showed some convection. Matter of fact, a lot of convection uh, going around the center of this storm. Look at this. This looks like this could be a tropical storm already. The National Hurricane Center has upped the chances for development. Uh, this, let's see if we can get in a little bit closer here. Look at that. There are thunderstorms, it looks like, convection rotating around this. This is a big uh, synoptic scale low pressure system, but since it's over warm waters of the Atlantic, sometimes they can transition into tropical lows. I wouldn't be surprised if this is what the National Hurricane Center calls Patty. Uh, coming up in the next 6 to 12 hours or so. It looks like it is uh, still intensifying a little bit too, but that's what we look for, for tropical systems, to be able to name them. We know there's a circulation. I mean, we've been following it for days as a subtropical system, extra tropical system, really. And um, and now it's got these thunderstorms around it. So temperatures uh, around the ocean are fairly warm, and uh, we could have a tropical storm in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean uh, where it looks like it's continuing uh, to strengthen. Now, I'm going to zoom out here and I'll move out a little bit further as we move away from that one. Let me put this into full screen mode so you can see what's going on. There's that circulation right there. The big storm. Look, we have to go all the way over here. There's the United States, uh, the East Coast from Cape Cod down to Florida. And uh, this is going to go into motion here, but I'm going to Go down to the south a little bit because this is going to be the area of concentration for the next several days. <laughs> of course, it has been over the last several days, if not the last week, where models have been pretty consistent in wanting to develop something in the Caribbean Sea here. And we have a broad area of low pressure. You see that? See that circulation going around? It's very tough to see. These clouds are moving this way. These clouds are moving this way. In here, we have a broad area of low pressure, and it looks like uh, we're going to have a more concentrated area of low pressure developing in the Caribbean Sea over the next couple of days. Uh, my guess, based on modeling, is probably Sunday uh, morning into Sunday afternoon, and I'll show you uh, why the models think that in just a second. But I do want to add in here... I'm going to add in here another layer, and that is the sea surface temperature data. There we go. So I'm just loading in that sea surface temperature data so we can see that, yes, it's still plenty warm in the Caribbean. And you can see that with these colors uh, right in here. So we have the energy we need uh, to create a tropical cyclone, at least as far as uh, ocean heat content and tropical uh, temperatures, sea surface temperatures are concerned. Uh, the next thing we need is moisture. And we're starting to get that. We see more moisture in the Caribbean here. We have a little tropical wave uh, that's moving through the area. And it looks like that's what might kick off development of this low pressure system. Now, a little bit further to the north, here is Hispaniola. Uh, right here and over here is Puerto Rico here's Puerto Rico right here and uh, we have been seeing this this is a, a broad area of low pressure as well not an organized area of low pressure but a lot of rain tropical rain showers and thunderstorms and you see these uh, clouds moving just to the from the north of this cloud cluster here moving over Puerto Rico giving them anywhere from two to five inches of rain over the last couple of days and they could be in for more uh, as this uh, area of low pressure tries to develop a little bit more north of Hispaniola, but it's going to drag some more moisture over Puerto Rico, and that could cause flash flooding. There are uh, flash flood watches in effect. There are uh, rip, rip current advisories, uh, particularly on the northwest side of the island, and also uh, high surf advisories on the northern part uh, of the island of Puerto Rico as well. 
So this is what's going to happen. It's going to be sort of a dance between a low pressure that develops here and another little low. And you can sort of see it on the northern edges coming together a little bit uh, north of Hispaniola over the next couple of days. And it's going to be sort of a battle of the bands, if you will, which low is going to win out uh, and develop into a tropical depression at least. I think it's going to be the one in the south here that's going to be cooking and percolating a little bit while uh, this one gets absorbed when it moves closer to Cuba. So here's what I want to uh, show you. And remember, that low pressure system that I showed you out there that might be developing into the tropical uh, storm patty, that's what it could be. I uh, switched over here to the European satellite, geostationary satellite. I love it. You can see it's getting dark already uh, in Europe and uh, across Spain. Here's France. Uh, and so here it comes. It's the Terminator lines coming towards the East Coast and the United States. That'll be uh, the sunrise, the sunset line, and then it'll be dark. But not yet. Still the afternoon uh, here in the United States. But look at this rotation. Look at that. You see that? That is the area that might become a tropical storm over the next several days. We won't have to worry about it too much, but it is going to be embedded in this broad area of low pressure. So uh, right now, this is a storm force low, which means 50 uh, knot winds uh, around the center here, and it's developing and intensifying. Big frontal system associated with it, but it, it stretches out well beyond it now. So we might see something spin up right there. Okay, well, back to the tropics and what we were talking about here with the sea surface temperatures. I wanted to show you the um, GeoCollaborate. And uh, I put the latest satellite image uh, in GeoCollaborate as well. Uh, and I want to show you all these areas. Look, here's that big low pressure system in the ocean. The Hurricane Center has now upgraded this to a chance of uh, tropical development of 40% over the next two days. So we're seeing that go up. It was 10%. Now it's 40%. I think we're going to see Tropical Storm Patty uh, just an inkling um, over the next uh, 6 to 12 hours here as more satellite data comes in and confirms the wind speeds. Yes, we can tell wind speeds from satellites that are orbiting uh, because they're uh, microwave sensors and they can dive down into the clouds and give us uh, wind speeds, which is really uh, quite exciting on its own. I'll have to explain that a little bit in a future update. But uh, down here to the south, here are the two areas that we're watching. That area of cloud cluster north of Puerto Rico. This is an area the Hurricane Center says has a 10% chance of developing over the next couple of days uh, into um, uh, when it gets uh, into north of uh, Hispaniola and over towards northeastern Cuba. But here is the big area here with now a 70% chance uh, from the National Hurricane Center of developing within the next seven days and 30% chance over the next two days. So here's what I think is going to happen. And of course, we have a couple others. Look at this over here in the Pacific that we're watching. So even though it's November 1st, sea surface temperatures are plenty warm and we have conditions that could lead to tropical development. So hurricane season doesn't end until November 30th and even beyond then we can still have tropical systems. So let's focus in on this area here. I'm going to go over to uh, the models and uh, we'll take a look at the uh, GFS model. I've initialized it here uh, or started this uh, on the initial um, area. And here we go. Uh, on the initial time of 12Z this morning, that's about eight o'clock uh, East Coast time this morning, uh, 12Z Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, is what uh, weather maps and data are based on. And what I've done is I've displayed here the pressure anomalies. So if there's a high pressure that's higher than uh, average and low pressure that's in blue is lower uh, than average. And so you can see that uh, that uh, storm out here in the, um, in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, and then also we have high pressure over the East Coast. Creating drought conditions, uh, by the way, we had maybe just a couple of uh, raindrops uh, during the day today uh, up and down the East Coast a little bit because of a frontal system that came through. Uh, but boy, October, it's going to go down as one of the driest Octobers on record in many cities up and down the East Coast of the United States, uh, even back down towards the uh, South. 
Uh, but let me put this into motion for you and I'll do it kind of quickly so you can just see uh, the fluid motion of these models and uh, what's happening. So if you look down in the Caribbean, you'll see an area of um, blue develop and that means low pressure. And there you go. There's a, a very concentrated area of low pressure here. Let's just call that a tropical depression. Uh, could be more. I'm going to switch over to another um, uh, quantity here in just a second, another uh, field to look at. But here's what we're talking about, the development here in the Caribbean. And this is valid on Monday afternoon. This is Monday afternoon. Hispaniola uh, and Jamaica could be impacted uh, by a tropical system. And then as it moves further into the future, we're now out Tuesday morning. You see it impacting uh, southeast Cuba. And then it sort of rides along Cuba there, which would tend to weaken it uh, if it has some sort of uh, organization to it. And here the models do have some organization. That's why it shows up as this concentrated uh, area of low pressure. And then uh, it moves out into the Gulf of Mexico. But notice this, this big area of high pressure that has been so persistent and really dominating the weather on the East Coast uh, is going to play a role here. You can think of high pressure as, no way, buddy, nothing's coming through here. Now, intense storms, hurricanes can barrel through uh, at times, but usually they follow what we call the mean flow, the average flow between about, oh, 5,000 and 7 to 10,000 feet in the atmosphere. That's kind of what pushes it along. So let's move this a little bit further. You can see we have, let's call it a tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and then it seems to intensify a little bit, but look, it moves to the south uh, towards the Yucatan and then kind of meanders around in the Gulf of Mexico before it dies. Why does it die? Well, look at this. This high pressure system has become super expansive. And when a high pressure system says, I'm going to dominate and I'm going to take over, not much can argue with it. It's got a lot of dry, sinking air, and uh, tropical systems need moisture and rising air. And when the two come together, usually high pressure wins. Uh, and that's what's happening here. So you don't even see any remnants of that system. And this is, look, by Monday, November 12th. So a week from Monday, that's when this disappears. So we have a lot of time uh, to look at this. The models will change. We're out here in fantasy land, our 252. Uh, so, but I just wanted to give you a peek at what the models are thinking. And I'll take this backwards again so you can see there it is in the Gulf, taking it backwards. Uh, so it's going back now over Cuba and then it develops. We see first inkling, there's the broad area of low pressure here. That's valid uh, Saturday night. So tomorrow night, we'll start to see this broad area of low pressure come together. Uh, now, I do believe this in the models because it's only 36 hours out into the future and they're usually pretty good. If this does get a designation, let's say like a 95L, I don't know what the number is going to be, but let's say it becomes 95L. Uh, then uh, the Weather Service and the Hurricane Center and the Hurricane Research Division, Atlantic Ocean Marine Lab, will focus models on that development. So we'll be able to see higher resolution model runs on this area of low pressure to see how it might evolve. And that gives us more information uh, to work on as well. Right now, this is the GFS. It's a global model. It uh, doesn't pick up really tiny things, but it does develop this uh, into a tropical system. Uh, that uh, impacts Jamaica, uh, and that is on Monday afternoon, uh, and then it moves up towards Cuba. So uh, that's the way it looks, and let me just take a look and see if I have the, uh, the hurricane names here. There we go. So we've been through Oscar. Uh, that was a Category 1 uh, storm. The next name on the list is Patty. I think Patty uh, could be named in the north atlantic ocean over the next uh, six to 12 hours or so we'll see i could be wrong uh it's just something that looks a little bit more tropical now with some of those storms wrapping around the center uh and then the one after that would be Raphael. Raphael would be the next storm uh that would be named after patty so uh it's a lot to look at in the tropics uh it's certainly something that we'll be keeping an eye on 
and uh, we'll be doing another update tomorrow on Saturday. And I just want to want you to know we're watching out. Uh, nothing's going to sneak by us. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on the tropics. And thank goodness we have the GOES satellite systems that are in geostationary orbit. We have GOES 16 that's over the east, watching over the east in the Atlantic. Uh, GOES 18, uh, which is uh, over the west coast and watching out to Hawaii and even part of Guam. Uh, and then we have GOES 19, which is being checked out for operational implementation. Currently, that is over the central part of the country. It's at the equator, but focusing in on the uh, central part of the Western Hemisphere uh, for us to watch. Uh, but currently, as you can see, uh, nothing here now, uh, but there should be something developing. I, I can see that broad area low pressure. You can see that. Uh, just watch, look at that rotation like right in here. So the broad area of uh, low pressure happening, and then we'll probably see something develop right in here uh, during the morning on Sunday. But we'll see you back here tomorrow. Appreciate your attention. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. Please have yourself a good weekend. Watch out for yourself and please watch out for your neighbors.